It may seem like an antiquated practice, but for many of our nation's sailors, burial at sea is a rite of passage, to the great beyond at least. After bidding a beloved Navy veteran fair winds and following seas, you can have their remains interned beneath the water they loved so much. The Navy will absolutely take care of the hardest part for you, but there are just a few simple rules to follow. There are also a few slightly less simple rules, like how to transport the corpse of a loved one to the actual sea. In the United States Navy, the ritual is less like a Viking blaze of glory and more solemn and respectful. Also, the only fire is from the rifle volley. Burial at sea is performed on ships, but only while the ships are deployed, which means that sadly, family members of the deceased cannot even be present. But the commanding officer who performs the ceremony will inform the family of the time and date, as well as the latitude and longitude, once the body has been committed to the deep. For the ceremony itself, all attending personnel wear the uniform of the day, though officers in the funeral procession and casket bearers may wear the mourning band on the left arm. There's a very precise guidance for the service. If a chaplain of the appropriate faith is not available, the service will be conducted by the commanding officer or a designated officer. The ship will be stopped with the colors displayed at half-mast. The service consists of scripture, prayers, and the committal, which is when the ashes or the body are committed to the deep, and the benediction, followed by the firing of three volleys. The taps is played, the flag is folded, and the ship's course and speed are then resumed. All active duty members of the uniformed services of the United States are eligible for burial at sea, not just the Navy. So are retired and honorably discharged veterans. Marine personnel of the Military Sea Lift Command and military dependents are eligible as well. But how do you actually get to be buried at sea? Once the individual has died, a person authorized to direct disposition can contact the Navy and Marine Corps Mortuary Affairs Office. You'll need a copy of the person's death certificate, a burial transit permit or cremation certificate, and the related discharge papers like the DD-214. These, along with the burial at sea request form, are all you need to request the service. In addition, every burial requires a flag, except for dependents. If you send your own flag to your loved one's service, it will be returned to you. If you don't, the Navy will provide one for the ceremony, but you won't get to keep it. Cremated remains must be in an urn or temporary container and must be sent to the point of embarkation with the necessary paperwork. For full casketed remains, you're responsible for shipping your loved one to the point of embarkation, along with the paperwork and optional burial flag. The start and end points for this transaction should be coordinated through transferring and receiving funeral homes who are approved by the TSA. Interestingly, many commercial airlines carry bodies of the deceased. You could have been flying with the dead this whole time and you never even knew it. I'd imagine that most of the people watching this video are like me, and you find military customs fascinating but for anyone who is learning about this because you've lost a friend or loved one, I'll say that the one place where I'm sincerely grateful for customs and courtesies is when it comes to honoring the fallen. I'm proud of our nation's service members, and I'm thankful we mourn them and lay them to rest with respect. And I'd love to know about your favorite tradition for honoring the fallen. Leave me a comment below and let me know.